Thanks for joining us for part two of anxiety, depression, underpinnings. Now, why would I say that? Part two, as we build off of the first teaching, the first segment, is to, a, a way of looking at something that leads up to the anxiety, depression, and panic that many might be experiencing. You're going to see how stress leads to that, and now we'll give you some practical approaches as to how to deal with it. Thanks for joining us once again. Uh, for our live stream. This one's going to be a follow-up to take one, I guess, or part one of stress, the exaggerated stress response. An overloaded individual with chronic stress, life, children, finance, work, demands, sleeplessness, problems. See, when it's ongoing, it will eventually affect your health. I mean, there's literature that shows that continuous unbridled stress can actually lead to heart failure and enlargement of the heart. High stress hormones and these catecholamines pounding and <laughs> rushing into the heart can begin to remodel the atrium of the heart. We already know that it can open the door. It's not singular in nature, but if you look at one disorder of the heart known as atrial fibrillation, some research that I've done on it shows that these high stress hormone levels, these cortisol and catecholamines, again, rushing into the heart can begin to change and make the internal parts of the myocardium in that atrium more susceptible to an exaggerated stress response, triggering off irregular heartbeats electrically within the heart. Now you would say, what in the world? I thought you were talking about stress. Yes, that's an example of how stress remodels the body. Stress will damage your bones. High levels of exaggerated cortisol response will melt your bones. Take it to the bank. It will produce inflammation in the body. It will disrupt the neurotransmitter production in your brain. It changes the neurons from the dendrites that are uh, leading to the communication. It can encourage weight gain. Uh, it can open the door to digestive disturbances, poor digestion, even ulcers. S stress and an exaggerated stress response is overwhelming to the body. So in part one, we kind of went over the basics and the physiology, then some basic nutrients, a multivitamin, buffered vitamin C ascorbates, ascorbates a quality multivitamin like the daily essentials. Um, the omegas, <clears throat> why your diet's important, why exercise is important, why you shouldn't drink a lot of alcohol to try to calm you down because it actually works in reverse for you. It actually harms you. It doesn't actually help you to calm down. Um, and how it can impair, do you know that alcohol impairs melatonin production? So if you're under a lot of stress, the last thing that you need to do is to drink alcohol to try to mitigate that stress. You need to use some supplements and understand the role of lifestyle changes and not use alcohol to do it because alcohol will damage the melatonin response. And then you won't sleep. You think it'll knock you out at first because it's activating GABA receptors, but it's dropping melatonin and then GABA activity in the brain becomes exaggerated. It needs more as the alcohol wears off and is cleared from the body. Now you're in an excitable state. Now you're going to wake up at three in the morning, four in the morning. Let me just read you a proverb because <clears throat> I think this ties to us today. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. You know, the fountain of life, uh, the fountain, you know, the fountain of youth for years, we talked, oh, well, this is the fountain of youth, this supplement, these hormones in the 60s, you know, hormone replacement, the fountain of youth for women, uh, Ponce de Leon, the fountain of youth. Well, the, first of all, the Bible says basically there is no such thing to see that we're going to die and that we're going to go on to be with him at some point in time if you know him. But really today is what I'd like to just say is, you know, the, 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 a fountain of youth, that's a pipe dream. The Bible teaches us that truly the fountain of life is reality and it's attainable if you'll seek the prudence. This prudence is a fountain of life. <clears throat> using prudence, using the wisdom of God as you read his word to help you make the right decisions, to help you live a life that is ordered, to have self-control as I spoke of in part one, 
as we do that, that becomes, prudence becomes a fountain of life to you uh, as opposed to looking for the fountain of youth, which doesn't exist, a pipe dream. Exaggerated stress response, exaggerated. I think that's the, the key word. An exaggerated stress response can open the door to anxiety disorders, panic disorders, depression. So if you're a psychologist and you're watching this, you're going to say, you are so far off your rocker. You're not a licensed psychologist. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're not a psychiatrist. Yes, I do. I do know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm telling you, if we are, um, what shall I say? If we are naive enough to believe that everybody that develops panic and anxiety and depression, that every one of us were born with that, then you tell me why we have incredible rising rates. We use more anxiolytic medications today. Uh, my background is in pharmacology. I am a naturopath. I'm a homeopath. I'm a board-certified clinical nutritionist. Anxiolytics, drugs like alprazolam, <clears throat> lorazepam, the whole gamut, off the charts in use and abuse. People can't sleep. They've got to take something to help them sleep. They can't get through their day. They're on SSRIs. They're on SSNRIs, selective serotonin, nor epinephrine reuptake inhibitors, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. We're on drugs like atypical antipsychotics to help us sleep, quiatopine, which is Seroquel, Trazodone, which is Desiril, let alone the Ambien's the Zolpidems of the world. We have huge issues, huge. So if your background is in psychiatric care, look, I, 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 we've got a counsel, totally agreed. Um, I'm on board with you. Do some people need medicated? I, I'm on board with you. Some people need medicated. But it would be foolish not to realize that we have an undercurrent brewing that has opened the door to the use of multiple medications, sleep medications, anti-anxiety medications, antidepressants, and it's triggered by a high, unmitigated stress response that eventually, as I taught you in part one, begins to damage the neurons in the brain, how you secrete and receive serotonin, dopamine, et cetera, the neurons become impaired. Part two today, more specifically, as we covered in one, which said, okay, let's make sure that we've got the basics covered. Basic nutrients, daily essentials, omegas, um, all right, lifestyle, okay, the basics. Today is a little more specific. Why do we need to know that specific nutrients are important? Well, I'm going to start off with phosphatidylserine, P-serine, and the benefits of P-serine. P-serine can mitigate or negate some of the effects of excessive cortisol in the brain. Phosphatidylserine is a, com is a very important uh, uh, phosphatidyl group, a lipid type substance that's important for neuron and brain structure. Phosphatidylserine can help with excessive cortisol, exaggerated cortisol response. I use two phosphatidylserines a day myself personally. Number two, can L-theanine now, you don't hear me talk about this often. We have it in combination in some press, preps and we have it alone. High stress <clears throat> can then actually cause an exaggerated glutamate activity in the brain. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. L-theanine is interesting because it can do a couple of things. It has a calming effect on the brain by by kind of negating some of the excess activity of glutamate that is in the brain. So it has a calming effect. But at the same time, it encourages your focus and attention. Very interesting compound, L-theanine. Very helpful for helping folks that are under a lot of stress, that are beginning to feel like their thought processes are out of control. They're racing they can't quite get them under control. My thoughts are flitting through my head. Phosphatidylserine, L-theanine. I mentioned in part one that the omegas, and I would just put it this way, the N3s are critical. I'm going to go back there. I believe they're critical. They're very, very important because we know the DHA component has a calming and a structural impact on the neurons in the brain as well. So phosphatidylserine, L-theanine, omega. Now remember... 
These are add-ons to part one, which has to contain something like the daily essentials. C, go back and watch part one. I taught you about C, how C helps. The daily essentials with adequate forms of coenzyme Bs and methylated forms of folic acid. Right? So just some of the basics that we covered. C and daily essentials and omegas was in part one. Lifestyle, don't drink a lot of alcohol. Don't, don't go that route. It impairs melatonin production. Um, know that you've got to exercise and move and you can't feed the beast by eating a lot of carbs and simple sugars and, you know, foods that are, and, and drink that are going to aggravate and drink a ton, ton of caffeine. So some folks are drinking caffeine all day and then drinking, you know, a couple beers at night and a couple glasses of wine to try to go to bed. I mean, that, that process is convoluted. And now what you're starting to do is you're altering the brain chemistry. You're altering hormonal production over the long run. All right? So we've got phosphatidylserine, L-theanine. Next, I want to talk to you about um, two ingredients that we have in the adrenal essentials. So some basic, a basic approach to be coping with stress is to deal, use something like the adrenal. What do we have in adrenal essentials? Well, the two compounds are rhodiola and relora. These are what we term as adrenal adaptogens. They help you to deal. They help the adrenals to cope. I guess I want to preface this by saying that any of these support agents or supplements can never um, override if you're in a horrible relationship, you need to think about that relationship. Uh, maybe you're in a job that is forcing you to compromise your, who you are. Maybe you need to think about that job. Maybe you're in a job that keeps you away from home and you travel and you're never home and it's tearing your family apart. See, I, I can't give you enough adrenal essentials and enough phosphatidylserine and enough L-theanine to overcome, sometimes you're just making a quality decision about your life. So whatever the areas, you learn to say no. I know personally for me, I have to be able to draw in. I've limited what I do. I limited my, um, I, I used to be involved in all types of associations, president of my county association. I would travel to Harrisburg once a month. I was invo involved in state boards, associations. I had to cut all of that if I was going to focus and do what I do on a daily basis here. I couldn't do that all. It was destroying me. It was taking a toll on me. So at some point, you may need to just draw a line in the sand. I can't give you enough supplements that'll make that go away for some of you. Some of you have no choice. Some of you are in very difficult situations. Now I'm going to say to you, do as much as you can structurally. Go walk, go walk your dog, go get a dog, have a cat. I mean, they're, they're soothing. Read your, read your Bible, read some Psalms, draw strength. You can see I use mine. Draw strength from this. This is not some gimmick or toy. This is not just a, this is not just some words. This is not, you know, written by a, a prophet. No, this is the word of God. The Bible says that it's alive, that it's real. It'll change your life. It'll give you a coping mechanism. I just read to you what it says about prudence. Prudence is a fountain of life. It's a fountain of life. A fountain, think of a fountain that flows. It doesn't just end. It just doesn't give you wisdom or help for a day. It's ongoing if you'll submit and be willing to receive that from the word of God. Maybe it means change. For those of you that have done that and you're doing this and you're still experiencing panic and anxiety, hey, yeah, we got mood essentials, we got nutrients, but first understand how to help your adrenal response. It might start here with the obvious basics here, okay? Um, I would say the next layer um, for individuals that are so we've got things like phosphatidylserine, L-theanine that help our coping mechanisms, et cetera. And then I have, um, I think the next layer for folks from a, a stress response is to then think about something like the adrenal essentials plus. Now I'm just going to read you some of the ingredients so that you can get a flavor and we're going to close this uh, so you can, a flavor of what I'm after. So what does it have? It has a little bit of C. It has the Bs, B6. It has pyridoxal 5-phosphate, the coenzyme form. It has some B12, 350 milligrams per serving 
of pantothenic acid, which is B5, which is critical. What I'd say in, the, in uh, teaching one, that pantothenic acid is very important to the adrenal response, so is vitamin C. They're critical to the cortisol production, mitigating excessive cortisol damage in the body. Then you have a little bit of rhodiola, which we have, we already talked about, an adrenal adaptogen. Um, it has a couple other herbs, but the one I then want to focus on is, is, is a licorice extract. Now, this, I believe, works at a different level for folks where now the adrenals are beginning to fade. I'm really tired. I'm fatigued. I can't get up in the morning. A little more sophisticated, but then this goes to where the adrenals are now on the downside. I have pretty much been focusing very frankly with, um, really it's up here, with everything to help with an exaggerated, excessive, high cortisol, high adrenaline, high catecholamine output. Change your lifestyle. Learn to say no. Use this not as like some gimmick or toy, but use this as a life-giving component to your life. Change your lifestyle. Read your Bible. Get to sleep at a reasonable time. Don't use comfort liquids like alcohol to think you're going to help yourself. It's going to impair your melatonin production. High cortisol already impairs melatonin. I'm not even against you using a little bit of melatonin here uh, at night if you're under high levels of stress just to counteract some of the excessive response. The ABCs, basic nutrients, quality diet, don't exaggerate the response. See, every time you pound a ton, of, have a cup of coffee. You just can't drink pots of it. You can't drink 20 ounce mugs of it. It's going to exaggerate that catecholamine response and that cortisol response. You, that, <laughs> yeah, 32 ounces. It's crazy. I mean, seriously, right? 30, 30, drinking 30 ounces of coffee. You need to be drinking 30 ounces of water, not 30 ounces of coffee, for goodness sake, okay? So high sugar, high cortisol, are these the cause of anxiety and panic? That's not my claims. You're opening the door. Mitigate all the areas that you can. Make sure you get to sleep at a reasonable time. We've got some preps to help you there. Learn to say no. Change your lifestyle and your diet. It takes discipline. It takes time to be able to do that. And then you begin to use some nutrients, such as quality extracts that are standardized, that can begin to help you with this exaggerated stress response. Is depression and anxiety where you're just born with it? I don't think so. I think there are a lot of other factors here that we're going to discuss in different contexts, in different ways, how the body produces inflammation. There are a lot of triggers to inflammation that opens this inflammation underlies anxiety and, um, and depression. Take that to the bank. Anything that triggers inflammation from your diet, from immune stimulating components of vaccines, which we're going to talk about, all this plays. But what you can still do is do the support that can help you. Thanks for being with us. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.